Hello and welcome to this month's October UN Info Session. My name is Madison Barnes and I'm here representing the San Diego chapter of the United Nations Association. The United Nations Association San Diego chapter is a grassroots civil society organization dedicated to the promotion of local engagement with the United Nations. The San Diego chapter was established in 1946 and works to translate the initiatives established by the United Nations into a more local context. The UNASD works with the United Nations Foundation and the UN Economic and Social Council to connect people, resources, and ideas in order to form a more cohesive, connected, and better planet. Mm -hmm. This month, we are talking to you guys about the ways the San Diego community can better promote mental health and eradicate the stigma behind seeking help. In line with our sustainable development goal number three, health and well being. Further, goal 3.4 is to prevent mortality from non communicable diseases and promote mental health. This is especially prevalent now as we're bouncing back into multiple in person activities after over a year of isolation. We will be focusing on the importance of providing adequate support to young students going back to school. Today, I am talking to the Executive Director of Mental Health America, San Diego, Daphne Watson. MHA was the first mental health organization to be established in San Diego and is dedicated to bringing together clients, families, professionals, providers, and community, community leaders in the public to collaborate, cooperate, and ensure affordable, available care to all citizens. Over the years, MHASD has offered numerous programs and services focused on the following four areas, advocacy, education, services, and research to promote mental health, prevent disorders, and conquer mental illnesses. So without further ado, hello, Daphne. How are you? Hello. Good to see you, Madison. I'm so glad that you were able to meet with me today. Um, just a couple questions for you regarding students' mental health and your recommendations for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us a little bit about your organization and your background in the mental health field. Well, a pleasure to be able to speak to all of you, especially to the students, because mental health is such a critical element in our lives, no matter who we are, no matter what age we are. And Mental Health America has been dedicated to really providing the necessary support and assistance and care to um, children, adults, young adults, um, older adults, so that we all don't have to suffer in silence. There's a tremendous stigma around mental health. And so our, our journey has brought us to providing unique and innovative services to really help people overcome um, the stigma, address trauma, and get the kind of care that they really need. Yes. Um, and how has COVID affected Mental Health America, San Diego? Well, you know, something that's a very good question. Um, certainly, we as individuals have been impacted. Some of our, my staff, um, a couple of them have uh, had COVID. But also the work that we do, we work in the community and we've been actively engaged in providing COVID education and support. Uh, COVID truly has impacted people's well being and, and affected folks in a real uh, way. There's increased anxiety, there's increased depression, there's been an increased domestic violence involvement, there's also an increased number of suicides. So our county really has been active in trying to address that, and many organizations like Mental Health America have really been in the forefront of providing education support. We assist people with testing. We educate them about vaccines and helping them get to a vaccination site. Um, my staff are um, really focusing on communities of color that oftentimes are fearful of how to address COVID and mental health. So we really work on breaking down those barriers, really providing the support and assistance people really need helping them to understand that um, some of the feelings that they have around being isolated and, and not able to communicate and connect with others, that anxiety is it's normal. And all of us would face that. That's something that we all can face. But there's things that we can do on, by, by ourselves and with others to be able to help overcome it. 
Yes, the, um, the American College Health Association um, reported that while 1.3% of uh, white students have dropped out from school, um, the numbers of Lat Latina Americans and uh, Black Americans have actually dropped out. So si about 6.3%, which is just a way higher number. And uh, a lot of students have um, raised reports about anxiety, about 71% uh, of students have reported burnout in 2021, which is about 10% more than any other year. Yes. And also, it really behooves the schools, mm -hmm. places of education to really be extra sensitive in this particular area, yes. helping young people get through this period of time, because it's it's something that's not easy, it was unexpected, and also just created its own trauma for folks. Yeah, and um, like, like, like you just said, uh, mental wellness is something that everyone's affected by. You, me, family, friends. Um, what would you recommend someone uh, do if they are struggling to cope mentally? Well, first recognize that um, all of us and any one of us could be impacted. But first do some natural healthy thing about making sure that you can um, you, you, if you can go out for a walk, do that. Make sure you have a mask and all the necessary things to make sure you don't expose yourself, but do some healthy exercise. Yeah. Try to eat well. Um, eating is important and sleeping well. Um, try to make sure your sleeping patterns are the same and that you're not um, using stimulants like alcohol to try to go to sleep because that just exacerbates the problem. If you're really, really struggling, you can reach out to um, mental health resources that are, some of them are online that are available. And also um, 211 has a number of uh, listings of uh, providers that you can actually contact and you can either set up an appointment virtually or you can set up an appointment in person, but you need to talk with somebody to help guide you and assist you so you don't suffer in silence. A lot of times, too, our family members and friends are, it's always good to be able to have them as our resource and support. But if you don't have that, reach out to, to call 211 and reach out to others to be able to help assist you and support you. Yeah, I actually um, saw on your website that you guys have a list of numbers and references uh, mm -hmm. to refer people to. And also, I really liked your guys' Instagram page, too, uh, the MHASD how it actually, the latest post, I think it was like yesterday or something, it was about um, how, if you're struggling to, uh, if you're struggling mentally, just do something for yourself today, like take a walk or, you know, uh, make yourself yes. happy, take a bath. <laughs> yes. You know, we, we all need to take time for ourselves and, it's, exactly. and give ourselves permission to take the time because oftentimes we either are so busy or we so we feel guilty to take the time that we need for our own selves. So taking a bath, eating well, exercising, talking to a friend on, on the phone if you possibly can, ha surrounding yourself with the loved ones that you really care about. Reach out to a friend just to hear, have a conversation with them. Um, reading a book with healthy kind of affirmation and learning yeah. is also, also very helpful. So doing the things that really enhance your well-being. Yeah. Then if you can't do that or it's still struggling, reach out to a professional and get some help. Yes. So um and so if somebody can't afford care, um, is that something that MHASD um helps provide for them? Or is there like a, some sort of free helpline? There are free helplines, but if you call our agency, we will help guide you and connect you to the right places. Um so that you can get access to the care you need. No one needs to suffer in silence. And there are, there are lots of resources available. It's understanding the pathway of getting there. And we can help you find that pathway connected to the right places. But the county has the access and crisis line. There's 211 has a lot of resource information. Um, there, you can, if you call us, we will help guide you to the right place. A lot of the universities have their own mental health clinics right on site on campus. You can avail yourselves of that as well. So, um, but 
we will be willing to help you and guide you to get to the right place for yourself. Yes. And I, I'm pretty sure you already said this too, but just to reiterate, what are some um, mental issues that a student might encounter coming out of quarantine? So, Well, the, the top one is that you're going to feel anxiety and depression. Um, and most of us all have some level of anxiety and depression when, when you're seeing, when you're experiencing such a traumatic event such as the pandemic. Also, many have experiencing loss and bereavement from the loss of a loved one or a friend or a family, or just our relationships in general. And, and so we feel really uh, depressed based upon that loss that we experience. At times you can have a, a mental health crisis that really lasts more than two weeks. Then it might co come into real chronic depression, it might morph into some bipolar disorder or some other kind of mental health condition. The, the key to it is mental health is this kind of um, situation where you have to get the assistance early. Identifying your, uh, the help you need early will lessen the impact of mental illness upon a person's life. So it could be just a situation as opposed to a chronic condition. When we don't get the help, when we don't um, outreach for the support we need, then we oftentimes spiral. And what happens is mental illness does not decrease with, with absence of treatment. It just increases. So you don't want to uh, stop doing something now or not do something that could really help you in a very positive way. So it really means paying attention to your body, recognizing that you're struggling, and then getting the help you need. You, you, you can, there are many resources in San Diego. You can call somebody. There's hotlines that you can avail yourself of just to talk to somebody. You need to really identify what kind of things you need individually and really seek the help you need. Mental illness is, is really something that you don't have to shy away from. It's no different from any other illness that a person may experience. People have diabetes, people have heart disease, people have headaches and, and other conditions. It is no different than that. But the key to is getting treatment and getting the assistance journey. Everybody's an individual, everybody's different. Everybody's needs may be different, but the lack of help, and lack of support, and lack of treatment is only gonna make it exasperate the problem. Love that. Um, and I uh, really appreciate you showing us what we can all do for ourselves and for our friends and family if they need help, um, what we can do for ourselves by calling the helpline or going um, online and searching for help. Uh, but what do you think schools can do to better provide uh, access and education for students and faculty struggling? Well, one, of the, one thing that we provide here at Mental Health America is met, mental health first aid training. Mm -hmm. And it's available to um, anyone in the community and even students at school um, and even professionals. Um, the training that it does is teaches you what kind of clues to look for when you're addressing people who are maybe having some difficulty, what kind of key questions you can ask and how do you support that person during the crisis and, and what things you don't do. You don't leave a person who's in crisis or ignore them and just minimize their situation. You really have to have take some active steps to providing the support and assistance. And we provide a whole eight hour training, which gives you a, a whole manual about what to look for and how to, how to connect with people, how to support them, how to give them assistance. And again, it is free because we're providing the training free in San Diego to anyone who wants to avail themselves of that skill. To become a, what we call a mental health first dater, meaning that you're certified in mental health first aid. It's like physical first aid. You can be a person who's learned the skills and how to help a person physically. We teach people how to assist a person mentally and you know, who are struggling mentally. So first thing is to really um, become mental health first aider. And we need as many people in San Diego becoming mental health first aider so we can support the people that need it the most. Yeah. Second thing is that Schools have to be extra sensitive and available 
two students who might need some help and assistance, really ma making the effort to, to outreach to them, um, setting up certain clubs or opportunities people can join and connect with one another, um, really creating like a hotline so that kids, young students can call and if they're struggling, no matter what hour of day or night. Mm -hmm. These kinds of things will help assist them to be able to get the help and support they need. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't. Uh, I read a little bit about that on your guys' website, but I didn't realize it was actually free. I think a lot of workplaces could even use that too. Mm -hmm. uh, just coming out of quarantine, even people that were working virtually now are in the office, um, I'm sure are struggling as well. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, and we, we offer the training virtually and in person so you can value yourself either way. Yeah, and you guys uh, provide other classes too, is that right? Yes, we do. We do provide education on depression itself, on various disorders like bipolar, schizophrenia. Um, we, we connect with um, the association, the psychiatric association in San Diego County. And sometimes we'll respond to one of their, uh, their members giving discussions on mental illness and various disorders. But we really try to break down the barriers and help people know what steps to take, really yeah. assist themselves in doing better. That's really amazing because a, a lot of people, even myself, um, aren't aware of a lot of these programs out there and organizations and things that you can actually do for yourself that, act, you know, you don't need, um, you of course need a doctor, but you don't necessarily need the funds to go and get that help. And a lot of times, you know, friends and family encouraging a loved one or a friend to get the help if, they, if they're struggling really is the first point of action. Mm -hmm. um, because before you get to a professional, usually you talk to other people that if they can encourage you to really get the help and, and be there as a support to them, usually people will respond effectively. Yes. Um, before I ask my next question, uh, in your own words, what would you say the stigma behind seeking help is? Well, it's, it's people's belief, especially in prior years, that there's something wrong with you. If you, have, if you speak about a mental illness that you may have or experience, um, if you, you, you feel that people will judge you um, in, a, in a negative way, you might lose friends or, or people that you care about because they might know that you have mental illness. But really, one in every four adults struggle with some form of mental illness. That's a whole lot of people. Yeah. And recently, we've been hearing about um, tennis stars who struggle in, about talking about mental wellness and mental illness. We've had um, actors speak about their mental illness and their mental wellness, the importance of that and the things that they're doing. So it's becoming much more um, easier for people to speak up and say, yes, I struggle with this and, I, and I, I'm seeking help and this is what I'm doing for myself. So yeah. it's important that we all recognize there's, not, there's no um, stigma in the sense of, of you having an illness. The challenge is if you don't do anything about it, that's really the problem. Yeah. And how do you think San Diego County and community can help facilitate the rag eradication of this stigma of seeking help? Well, we need more dialogue. We need to continue to talk about mental wellness, mental illness, and, and really how you, a person can seek help. We ought to make sure there is no barrier for them when they are trying to seek help, that they are able to get the help they need. Um, we really want to be able to help them appreciate that it is a it is a condition that affects every race, gender, um, ethnicity doesn't matter, and so we all can collectively make an improved um, situation for all of us. We can work together to improve the lives of all. So if we do that, we're going to all be successful together. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jaffine, for helping answer our questions and working with your organization for the betterment of uh, mental health in San Diego. Um, we really appreciate it so much. Uh, for the 
end of this session, I just have a small presentation on some of the official UN 2030 sustainable development goals. Um, as you know, that we just talked about our sustainable development goal number three. And as of now, the UN is focusing on the 17 sustainable development goals and agenda for 2030, uh, such as no poverty, a goal uh, to end poverty in all forms by 2030, uh, zero hunger, achieve food security, improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture, and aff affordable clean energy uh, to achieve and endure uh, access to reliable, sustainable, clean energy for all. These are only three of the 17 goals uh, the UN, UN is working towards. Um, this charter implemented at the global level may seem daunting, but with each community focusing on these goals at a local level as uh, such as MHA, SD, what you guys do, mm -hmm. um, it can be a lot easier to implement programs and form solutions within each community to uh, collectively conquer each one of these goals. Um, if the same model were to happen within each city, uh, the SDGs will be more attainable with multiple solutions for each community and has the possibility of being implemented at an international level. Um, in the video's description, we will include the MHASD social media handle and a link to their website. Uh, feel free to follow and take a look at the UNASD uh, website and social media as well. We would like to encourage and thank everyone for watching our monthly UN info sessions and please continue to do so.